Hi and welcome to Stock Control Management System developed in Excel using VBA. So let me show you guys how this works. You see all of this information here. If I move this down, you can see it's not right here. But let's say we click on to workbook. There we go. You see that, guys. Let's add another one. So let me show you how the whole system works anyway. I'm going to reset. I'm supposing we have a customer. So our regular customer, we have all the information stored in our system. So let's enter all the number this time around. That's all the number. And in here we have let's say we go for that very product and that's supposed to be eggs and the name of this customer supposing this customer's name is Sammy Sammy Johnson right an address of Johnson let's say is uh, number 15 let's say add it on the street all right PO box there and how many of those products do we need let's say we're going for 54 and here we want the expired date and that will be the other date on sales yes method of payment let's say is mastercard account type let's say is debit debit account discount maybe 10 percent vat yes and now all we need to do is then click on total there that is how the system works so what I'm going to do now is to take you guys straight into Excel development environment and we put one of these very advanced stock control management system together so let's do that now guys hi and welcome to the Excel tutorial of stock control management system let me start by saving this very project before we and start okay I'm going to save my project in here and it's going to be called all right that would be the name of my project Let's click on save there we go stop control management system all right the first thing I like to do is right here I'm going to enter the following here so that would be product let's say product ID then on the next column I'm going to give that product name and let's speed that up then I'll get back to you guys okay and i'll have all my fields ready on the workbook itself or spreadsheets there we go so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to the developer here click on the developer and select visual basic but if for those of you who are new to vb vba programming all you need to do is to go to file and make sure you select options then in there you need to come to customize ribbon for you to get your developer menu this is it make sure it's checked and you click on ok and you should be able to see the menu here click on that and select visual basic and this will pop up okay once that is up all you need to then do is to select insert user form right there that's the user form there 
So all we then need to do is to define the size of this form how we want it. You can always right click and select the properties and whatever size of the form you intend to use the choice is yours. Maybe enter it in there. Okay for the form width I'm going to define that as 1020 and the height let's make the height approximately 600 there that is done now let's go straight to the tools there right here click on that and I'm going to select the frame and draw the frame right here okay that's my frame there the content on the frame go to the caption get rid of that that's it done okay the next thing I like to do now is up here I'm gonna get a label there and on that very label I will enter the following stock let's say stock control management system management system so that's going to be the title stock control management system let's increase the font size to something a little bit readable so I'm going to make that Maybe 36. Just drag that much. And take it up. Okay, I can't see the stock. Let's see. Stock. Right. Maybe move this down a little bit more. alright that is my title there I will reposition that and just enhance it anyway okay we're gonna get that centered anyway so that's fine for now alright the next thing I like to do now let's add another frame here on this very frame that's where we have my customized details so I'm going to start with the label there. Let's grab a label here. Yeah. The label is going to be called customer ID. And let's increase the size so that you can see it properly. Make that bold, maybe 14. Customer ID. Okay. Then we then need copy across and let's make this order order number or order yeah order number is fine order number then here I'm gonna have first name and so name now the first name Then we have Sony in here. And let's add as follows. I'm going to enter the text box here. And another text box. Another one. And one more. So let's speed up the whole process for these very customer details. Okay guys, this is how the interface is looking now. I had to design the whole interface or else this would take a very long time. So what is left for us to do now is to start with the coding. But just before we start with the coding, let me show you how it's going to look like when we run the program. okay this is how it's going to look like there's nothing happening here and here we have a sort of like this is a calendar really 
okay and um, it's all created using a button these are our labels and this is a uh, combo box combo box here as well I've changed the customer to combo box and we have buttons here combo box combo box and all the way those are our combo box as well then we have combo box here this is a uh, label 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 here we have text box another label here label that's a label as well so label 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 text box text box text box and text box and these are all labels so what we need to do now is to start with the coding part of the whole project if it happens to take more than 20 minutes I'm gonna to have to divide it into two separate into two separate or three separate uh, videos because it might take a long time for me to complete the coding I haven't really make up how I'm gonna go about the coding but let me start with the exit first so right there we have the exit button okay double click on the exit button itself there we go and maybe if you like you can declare a global variable of exit there on exit I'm going to declare that as an integer there and right here inside exit line of code I'm going to say I exit equals as follows so message message box confirm if you want to exit and close that comma so I'm now going to enter visual basic question there then let's say plus VB yes no and finally I'm just gonna enter the name of my project stock control management system there that is my those are the building functions that I intend to use now we use an if statement if I exit equals VB yes then what I would like the application to do is unload me there we go and if so that is my exit taken care of so if I try the exit there we go and uh, confirm if you want to exit no nope. let's try it again confirm if you want to exit there we go the exit is working how as we expected okay now let's take care of one thing first I would like the system when it load up when the form activate I would like it to populate the product ID customer ID and so on so let's double click on the form and we need user form activates right there drop this down and select activate and right here I'm going to declare a variable dim I comma dim d as integer and let's use a for loop for I equals one to five now let's say C mb product dot let's see what's the spelling is meant to be product id product id dot add item and the item i would like it to add let's say p id zero zero close that and I so that is the first I like it to add 
the second one is going to be let's I'm gonna copy all of this just to speed up the whole process let's enter CNB customer ID dot add item I think I've already copied it anyway let's get rid of that and paste that in there and that is this one is going to be C C C I D let's put a one there okay the next one is going to be C M B and let's call that order order ID dot add item and in this case is going to be ID zero zero let's say two right and next I so that's the first one I would like the system to to load up for me and if I run it this is how is what what will happen you see that guys okay let's see how to get rid of that an error there somewhere let's try it again okay that's fine and let's see the product that will prove that is fine as well okay let's close that and continue with the form activate on the form activate I'm gonna enter let's create another for loop so this for loop in this case is going to be for D so let's change that to D and it's going to be from 0 to 20 and let's say step step 5 okay and that will be C M B discount dot add so the discount we given to our customer is going to range from 0, 5, 10, 20 and so on and what do we want it to add, we want it to add that and just nest that as well next day if I run that, let's check out the, the discount, that is the discount 0, 5, 10, 15 and so on alright, I guess you guys get the whole idea so I'm going to repeat exactly the same thing for for my payment which is right here payment method the VAT and the account type so let's go back in here so for the VAT account type and so on we just enter the following okay at form activate all of these are added to those to, to, to those objects so let's run it VAT yes that will be yes or no and account type okay and this one okay let's see if you guys can see it properly I may have to find a way to move it up alright that is fine and it can also be yes now the next thing we want to do is you see this product if I select this product I would like it to populate whatever we have in there okay so let's take care of that that sales as well is fine so let's come in here now and double click on this this very one double click on that and right there we need to enter we need to enter as follows I may have to speed that up because a couple of lines of codes there we go right have a good look at that so if the product ID is selected happens to be PID 001 all of this should be populated with the following information so that that's going to be seed rice 200 and so on so let's run it and you see what I'm talking about so we select that okay 
see you see what happened so let's see why did one not work one is not working three works let me come back in here okay okay I really can't find what's wrong I'm just I've just moved that in okay product ID okay one and this one let's change this around I want it to be on this here and this here and let's run it and see what's gonna happen so select number one there we go all right and it also gave up the the price that is fine okay then that's good all right let's have a look at the reset button so I'm gonna exit out of the system but the problem with the reset is there's a lot of object to reset so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group them all together using a for loop but first of all let's say dim C controls let's just call the control as control all right so C control for each C control for each C control in me dot control me dot controls if C control dot name is like let's say LBL Then C control equals VB let's clear the spring and in here let's say next so let's try this out and see what's gonna happen so I'm gonna run it this is for LBL run it now and select anything here so let's check this out so that is not working let's come back in here and see I said LBL let's go back in there okay I'm missing a star yeah, that is it so let's run it now and see again if I enter any value in there reset there we go you see that so I need to be able to repeat the same thing for text box because if I click on this I can only clear the label so let's come into the the reset and just copy all of this I'm going to repeat it for text box and let's say this is combo box as well combo box and this one will be whatever is txt let's see hopefully that should work fine all right let's run it now okay that's for combo box and this is for this and let's enter some data in here an address Okay, let's check. Let's just check it out if it's going to work the way we want. And if it does, that that will be great. Try this out as well. And reset. There we go. It's all working how I want. That is fine. Okay, that's good. That's the reset button because without that, it's going to take me couple of lines of code so have a good look at that very line of code for the reset there we go that's the reset button 
that's good and here let's bring this up so that you can see it these are the lines of code for the cmd product id let's take it down so that you can see the rest there and here these are the lines of code for the form activate up to here there so now what i want to do is to put together some lines of code for this calendar here so the first thing i'm going to do is to create a function i'm writing here let's go in there we we'll speed that up as well so right here are the function those are the lines of code for the calendar itself so have a good look have a very good look at it all right so that's for the function now I'm now going to call this very function so let's go back in here let's go back to our program I need the form I'm going to use form activate or maybe I should use form initialize let's come into initialize okay right in there now we then call as follows so have a good look at it from here down here so let's run it and see what's going to happen you see that guys the form has actually initialized as follows okay date of order valid from an expired date is not there and we all the dates maybe the expired date and the reorder date should be the same so which means if I click on any of these it should tell me when to reorder okay let's exit now let me just go back there and show you guys those lines of course again this is the function calendar function have a good look at it again so that you guys can understand how it's put together there's a lot of lines of code in there just have a very good look now I then initialize this function there okay but right up here I have a variable that is declared those are the lines those are the variable that are declared for the calendar variables function and initialize form initialize now let's go to the easy one double click on that and in here I want to be able to call so if I double, if I want to be able to enter value for this and this. So if I run it, um, I don't want this order date. So let's get rid of the order dates. Double click and go to initialize. In there, I have my order dates there. That's the order date. I'm going to get rid of that. Let's maybe cut it off. And let's come in here double click on this very button there paste that in there and get rid of this very one so it's going to be d1 dot control tip text so if i run it the control tip text for that will be there so that is now the order date Okay. 
but that's not correct so let's go back oh that's correct April yeah it's in American standard okay that is correct on the 4th of April so if I select this should give me on the 18th so let's but I want the expired date to be the same so let's grab the name of the expired date as well let's come into the properties copy and double click on this so expired date is going to be the same copy all this paste in there so I'm going to copy this anyway because I'm going to need them for every single button so if I click on this expire date and reorder date are the same okay so now double click on the next button paste that in there that is D2 change this one to D2 exactly the same thing for number three number four now that's Wednesday I'll repeat the same thing for Wednesday that is four five it's sort of like painstaking so I'm gonna have to speed it all up after the very first row to Saturday that's number seven now you guys get the whole idea I'm gonna have to speed it up okay I finish putting together the lines of code for each buttons so let's see anyway those are the lines of codes it's up to 42 and it's exactly the same lines of codes anyway guess you guys can see that and there it is done so let's run this program and see okay if I select any of these there we go and at uh, the form initialize actually enter this so if I click on let's say 18 it shows me the date of 18 as 12 30 and so on so that's the reorder date date expire and reorder date now if I reset this an error somewhere you see this is all gone so because if I decide to enter another one I don't have that those information anymore so what I'm going to do is since it's all from initialize I can come straight to the initialize right here and we just call initialize where is form initialize somewhere here there we go so I'm gonna call this so let's copy that and I'll come in here inside my yeah right inside the product right up there let's say call initialize you guys can see that huh? so we call initialize right there so that should take care of that very problem so when we run it now initialize we have rice there enter whatever we want to enter in here number of item ordered okay now okay we need action how many we want to order number of item order number of item order okay this is for the customer and this is for the product there so this should fill this so if i reset there we go you see that okay all gone now there's more work to be done if i enter whatever i want in here number of order this is number of order we want this as well let's say we say five here and we'll 
just want the system to feed through each other. Sales, that is fine, that is fine. We still need to take care of the calculation anyway. So instead of talking too much, let's just get on with it and get this thing out of the way. Okay. All right. In the first place, this is number of item ordered for customers. So I'm going to come right in here. Customers number of item order. Let's change this. Yeah. Number of order or number of item order. That's a label. So I'm gonna change it to a text box. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Delete and let's copy this across. right okay let's double click on this and enter as follows number of order equals txt number of item order dot text so whenever I enter a value in here it automatically fit through so let's give it a try you see that that's what I want so that's fine all right so all we just need to do is now is multiply this by this to get the right value so what about action order date action okay reminder sales and so on all right so to deal with the calculation Let's deal with the calculation. And this comes here. This count. See that goes up. No VAT. So we just need to take care of the calculation now and we can call it the end of the whole program. Right. No, we still need to take care of this. We need to feed it through the spreadsheet itself okay let's come into total double click on total okay let's take care of the total i'm going to double click on that and right in here the first thing i'd like to do is to declare a variable for my tax so a local variable for the tax let's say is double there and use an if statement if cmb discount dot text if that is equal zero then I like the following to take place so tax equals by value LBL cost dot caption Now multiply that by by value txc number ordered number order dot text. Okay, let's say we have multiplied by seven point five and then divide by one hundred. Now LBL LBL tax dot caption equals tax and LBL subtotal dot caption equals by value lbl cost dot caption and we multiply that by 
LBL order this very one let's copy that so that is my subtotal now for the sub uh, for the total so we can just say total equals as follows let's close this here okay total I'm gonna copy that paste this right underneath here so this is total get rid of that and total will become by value as well by value let's get that of subtotal let's get rid of all of this even subtotal paste that in there and let's say plus tax so that is my total and this there's no need for this one here yeah, that's fine so we can end that and if so let's try just this very one out but then let me convert all of these to pound sign let's convert that in here paste that I'll just convert that to pound sign so we can then enter our format here let's see format LBL tax dot caption comma and enter pound sign ash comma ash ash zero dot zero zero and close that that's for the pound sign all right i'm gonna copy this let's make sure it's correct though yeah i'm gonna copy that and paste it here repeat the same thing here and just copy this paste that in here and here as well or we can just type total there right okay I'm gonna try this out that is just without discount let's run it and see so enter whatever there enter how many amount I want in there or maybe change that to whatever and just discount is zero and just click on total there we go right that's working how i want good so all i just need to do now is to copy and paste and change the values around so double click on that now come down here copy and we're going to use else if else if if this is five so what I want the system to do is as follows in here I'm going to say subtotal equals so it's going to become subtotal let's grab the subtotal cut that off and right underneath here paste that and that will become the cost we multiply that by order and let's say minus by value that will be the cost as well ok let's come in here and just copy this
paste that in there multiply by this and then we need, now need to multiply it by 5 and divide by 100 okay let's cover this up and cover this up as well right yeah so in that case tax is going to be subtotal subtotal scurvy or subtotal multiply by 7.5 divide that by 100 cover this up right cover cover and here okay so that is fine so i'm going to repeat the same thing for the second one the third one i actually copy that paste that in there in the case of the third one this one will become 10 and this will become 10 as well there okay let's try this three out before we continue so we don't run it and see I'll change that to whatever enter how many of those that I want to team and there we go let's try it out discount is five there we go I said the discount if it's ten there so I'm gonna exit and let's go back inside the total so that we can complete all of the all of the calculation so I'm going to copy this now copy and I then need to change let's change that to 15 percent okay 15 percent and next is 20 percent right so that is it for the total taken care of all right let's run it and see now if i come in here select any of that how many of those items i want and click on let's go for maybe 10 percent supposing we want five percent and zero percent 15 and 20 there that is fine now reminder and action these two they need to be looked after one two because this one will have to officially enter data in there so the name here let's say the name is Okay, and the other name I say is King Address Will Road. Right, postcode. So, reminder let's say we have method of payment and as well. okay. now we need to suppose when I select this I want this to generate something here it's not on sales on sale or not on sale or whatever and here I want something to appear in there reminder okay reminder okay the reminder can be this if the reminder is that that might take a while okay we can just copy whatever is in here to remind it here 
or expire date this very one okay right so let's come in here expire date we need that we need the name of that expire date and reminder so reminder good so expire date double click and say reminder dot caption equals equals lbl date expires dot caption okay so let's say and expire date I think oh that is a click event no we don't want a click event let's cut that off we actually want when it changes let's see is there anything like that there don't click we don't want to click let's go back in there so that is a click suppose and we use this but there must be something here so we come in and say we have a value here okay and here we enter that and here we have that and in here let's say we enter amount yeah that is fine okay reorder reorder deal all right let's go back in here let's move this a little bit in so that we can get the old data here yeah so let's try it again Reset. Reset is not working here. Oh, it's working. All right, that's fine. It's working. Okay. So what about action? Action. Let's come back in here. So action is going to be similar what is the action called Move this up lbl action so action can be dot so action can just be this anyway there okay you can always put some enter something else so that is fine for those two okay to transfer every content on the form to the work workbook I'm going to start by declaring as follows Dean workbook as worksheet right or work worksheet let's call it worksheet right now then add add new as that would be for my range Then let's say set work worksheet equals 
sheet one of my spreadsheet then I'm going to set add new equals worksheet or WKS dot range and let me go for six sixty five thousand three hundred and fifty six approximately the the cells we have on the spreadsheet dot end x that will be xl up yeah close that dot offset and that will be one comma zero there okay now the first one let's come in here and see the name of the very first one there we go product ID so in there I'm going to now enter just say oh there's an error here that was supposed to be equals right so let's say new add new offset add new dot offset that will be zero comma zero dot value and what will that value be in this case the value is going to be cmb first thing first let's get the value I think it's CMB Pro. oh there we go yeah that's it right there this very one copy that and paste it right in there dot text so whatever I have in there now the second one is the product name the product name is that supposed to be this okay now let's copy all of this so I have my product name paste that here and this will become what one next one is the description so I want to grab my description here copy that and paste that in here as well then we have stock level reorder level so this will be two so let's take care of stock level and reorder level Stock level, the other level. This one will be column three, column four, and this is stock level and the other level. My stock level. Place that there. And the other level. Place that in there as well. okay let's have a look at we have reorder level reorder date okay let's copy this let's add more now this is going to be five six seven eight nine okay now we want the following out of stock let's come in here out of stock is there all the date I don't know that so 
So I'm gonna put also out of stock here. Re all the dates. Save that. I'm coming here to look for re all the date. We need the name of re all the date. Re all the date. Copy that back on the code. And this is the re all the date. Now, what else do I have? Reduce that number of order. So it is going to be painstaking. I may have to speed up the whole process and get back to you guys. So we want number of order. Okay, number of order. I can use this one or this one. Number of order. Yeah, let's come into the property and check that out. TXT. Okay, we need the codes. Right. Okay, I have covered it up to customer reference. So I'm gonna call take care of one, two, three, four. So let's come to this four copy and paste it right there. So that will be eleven, twelve. 13 and 14 so that's going to be this one will be txt first name right and the other one will be surname address Code. I think that is TXT as well. Right. Okay, now we're here. Number of item. Number of item ordered. Yeah. I remember that. So item order. Back in here. Number of item order. Okay, let's copy another four. Paste and repeat exactly the same. That would be fifteen, sixteen. 17 and 18 so from postcode here up to here number of item order yeah that's it copy that back on the code and that will be this supposed to be text okay item ordered somewhere here item ordered with an LDL dot 
caption. Method of payment. you guys get the whole idea I'm going to now speed it all up and get back to you guys as soon as I'm as soon as it's done okay I think I've finished with the lines of codes hopefully this should add the data onto the spreadsheet I think here there should be an A there all right so all we just need to do now is to is to give it a try and see how it's going to work. But before then, let me show you the lines of code for the spreadsheet again. Okay, that's the lines of code for the spreadsheet. And here, the spreadsheet itself, that's it is empty as you can see. So I'm going to move these ladies. Let's bring it down and we're going to run it and see so enter that into all of those data and in here we need to enter the name let's say is Casey Casey Jones An address of Miss Jones is uh, Full town way. What's good? Seven one T Y. Uh, seven. Number of item fifty six. So now what is the on sales? And sales method of payment, let's say cash and uh, credit account. She deserves 15% yes, VAT, and that's it. So, click on total. There we go. Now, let's move this aside. I'm going to move it aside so that we can add it, and you guys will see it. You see, to workbook. If I click on that there you see that guys let's say I click it on it again look at that that's beautiful okay using this type of interface that's very good so with that guys I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial I suppose you guys enjoyed so you all have a nice day now bye for now